so anyways, this is some interesting stuff because this is part of my esoteric knowledge, part of my book about language alchemy. And I have before broken down the English language to at least to the rules like noun, pronoun, um, verb, adjective, preposition. And I have before talked about truth versus fact, that a fact is a person, place, or thing. It's a noun. It, can, it can't be anything but a noun. But a truth or perception would have an adjective applied to it, a qualifier. And a verb could also be an adjective. Well, a verb could also be a qualifier. And it's still based upon perception, okay? So there's a lot of ways that people can cast spells on each other using the words out there and then, and then, uh, then I'm looking at like the Bible and then I'm looking at all the different doctrines in all of the politics, religion, and science. I'm looking at even the constitution. I'm looking at, um, all like every single, uh, book and text and, and whatever, and dictionary, every word is a type of like element. It's a piece of energy and words do conjure up energy and you can direct it you can receive it, you can carry it. Why, when some people are obese, when someone is obese, they have taken words and energy and they have allowed it, they've, they've carried the words and the energy in their body. They refuse to release all of the spells and all the things that was like forced upon them, whether it's in utero, whether it's through a genetic line, and when somebody is very malnourished, when somebody is very skinny and they're not, and they have food issues, they have anorexia issues, they words, they, they carry on words inside of them that are eating them out from the inside, cannibalizing them. And then they also do not let anybody in and they barely even let food in. And so that's why you see some people who are like so skeletal who don't weigh anything because they have not allowed many people in and they don't even allow food in and they've starved themselves from energy because they were exposed to energy that was trying to destroy them. And so what is a natural reaction? They deflect most energy out there. They don't know how to convert it correctly. And so it makes sense. And then this whole thing with the prayers, like I see everybody on Facebook going like, oh yeah, pray for this person, pray for that person. My friend's in the hospital. My friend is going through an issue or my dog's missing or whatever. Pray for my dog. I'm like, I mean, I see everybody asking for prayers. I'm like, what is the point of this? And then I and I fall into it too. I'm like, okay, prayers for you, whatever, you know. And and I'm just like, what, what, what good is that going to do? So I send a prayer over to them. And this person who doesn't know how to convert energy to begin with for the even the reasoning of why they're even looking for prayers what good is my prayer going to do for them? It's like giving someone food that has no ability to process it correctly because they haven't had the right concoction to heal and seal and then process that food correctly. You know, when you, when you, when you try to treat someone who is so mean, so nice, you know, that's wasted energy. When someone is mean and they're whatever, you don't try to kill them with kindness unless you work with them. And then you do whatever you have to do to avoid them until you have to work with them. But, I mean, there's no reason to go and try to force yourself upon people to try to convert their energy when obviously they don't have the ability to convert their own energy. What makes you, what makes you think that you can convert somebody else's energy? That's why I say there's no conversion on Jeju's. A person has to come to that point to themselves to figure out if they want to live or they want to freaking die. That's why Julie Juice is not something that um, is like anything else out there. Okay? And so, yes, there are a lot of religious types. I'm sorry to say, but there are a lot of religious types that do go by the Bible, these doctrines, and they have this very dogmatic point of view, and it is like a spell. And then when they say pray for this or pray for that, or this is my Holy Father, or that is my Holy Father, whatever, um, they're trying to galvanize energy that they have no, they don't know what to do with. Let me tell you, if you need somebody else's energy, you obviously have no ability to, to even know what to do with it. If you need somebody else's energy, or if you need somebody else's energy, you would need only a little bit of that person's energy, and then that would be it, and you wouldn't need their energy ever again. 
because you would know how to convert it the first time. But if you continuously keep asking for prayers out there, if you keep continuously asking for all of this stuff out there, then you have the inability to bring it forth upon yourself, which means that, that, that what's the, what's the point? Then what happens is when someone has the inability to convert the energy and they're down to their last little tiny bit of energy and they're asking for all these prayers and you're over there praying over them and whatever, you actually, the person that actually is directing the prayers on someone who says they need it and they're on their last legs, your prayer could actually be the thing that actually destroys them. You realize that? Just like a food could be the last thing that actually destroys somebody. But, you know, when um, when you're looking at the full thing of Julie Juice, Julie Juice is energy, and it's backed up by the food supply, okay? And so you're supposed to eat food with Julie Juice. You're not supposed to really starve yourself. So that's why those that are in really dire extreme care like hospice, they need to eat a bunch of food and do J juice so they can rebuild and all that stuff and feel the pain. But it's no matter what, when you're on that last little bit of part of your life, a food could destroy you. Um, anything, the wind can blow and destroy you. A someone's prayer could destroy you. If there's no telling which, where the origination of the of that energy source was the catalyst to actually then cause the person's death. And so you have to realize that everything is energy. Words are energy. What you say is energy. Um, biochemistry, chemicals, which is everything. Biodiversity. Everything is everything is energy. And again, when someone is obese, they have taken on energy that they don't know how to release. That's why jelly juice is so important because some people have to, have carried this kind of negative energy or horrible energy that they haven't released and it's causing them malfunctions in, in all of their 12, 11 different systems. And then it also affects their behavior. It affects the way they see the world, the way they perceive the world. And so yes, sugar is energy and it's covalent bonding. Salt is energy and it's ionic bonding. Salt allows things to come off and come on. It's like the positive and negative, right? The, the opening the door, closing the door, opening the channel, closing the channel. The covalent bonding is still energy, but it's energy that can also be worked on and worked off. It still needs to be, you know, influenced by something else. Or you wouldn't have obese people in our society. But the reason why we have obese people in our society is that people still can hold residual energy that they don't know how to release. And so that's why the Jilly Juice waterfalls are so important because that is also releasing old programming. And so when you are in solitude and you're doing the J-Juice and you're feeling your predispositions and you're like, like, I'll tell you what, this last, like today I slept in, I was really tired. I was holding on to a lot of poop because I was going through an evolution being exposed to the new COVID. So I was very bloated. And finally, you know, everything I ate, uh, I think what I ate was a bowl of cereal, Wheaties. I drank a little bit of juice last night, but I didn't want to do the waterfalls. I just wanted to drink a shot of J-Juice and ate a bowl of, Wheaties, bowl of Wheaties this morning. And I was thinking this morning, and then I took a shower. And then um, and then I, I, before I took a shower, I like, did a whole thing of poopy stuff and took a shower. And then, bam, I'm like, oh, my God, I have a realization. And that's when I posted about words. That's when I posted about spells. That's when I posted about the prayers. Okay? I'm telling you. Prayers do not work if people do not know how to convert the energy properly. And if they knew how to convert energy properly, they wouldn't need prayers. They would do it on their own. They would eat food. They would convert it correctly. They would be so well balanced. They'd be out there producing, being peaceful, being amazing out there. They wouldn't have cancer disease and chronic illness. But I'll tell you, the ones that need the prayers the most are the ones that do not know how to use the prayers the most. And that is all of Paul. Well, that's. All of religion, all of religion. I'm sorry to be the one to say it, but I'm going to say it because I got to be true to what, where I'm coming from. Now, I get that you can redesign religion to have you design your religion. Organized religion already has a set of doctrines, a set of spells for you to live by. Some are great and some are like, whoa, there's a major judgment on this or there's a major limitation on this thought process. But 
people who have unbalanced energy would not discern between something that actually is pretty awesome and something that actually is pretty like, ooh, that's a little manipulative there. And then different pastors and different leaders out there will then go and do their own sermon and inflict more words and spin some of the words out there that are in the Bible or in specific organized religions. So you have to be careful when you follow any kind of organized group process. So that's why solitude, solitary, independence, um, independent of the medical holistic, of the pastors, of organized religion, of somebody else's belief system, you got to be completely independent and either you promote life or you destroy life. Those are the only two options out there. And so if you promote life, then you understand the laws of life and you understand the spells and all of the all the, 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 the magic behind programming in our society and you understand how people use it to manipulate each other, how they use it to manipulate you into buying something or believing in something and then you understand how the world truly works. And that includes the Constitution of the United States which is a living document. Some people do not want to see it being revised challenged because they still have the residual old programming and now we're entering into a new world where things are going to be changing okay it's just inevitable so if you're still stuck with the old programming and we have a new atmosphere called a virus which is going to be the balancing force and if you're not converting that energy correctly you're not going to be able to survive the next world and some of you don't really care you don't want to be in the next world you would rather live out your 50 years, 60 years, and be done because you don't like where society is going. And so you've already cast that spell of inevitable death upon you as well as everyone around you that believes in your thought process. Okay, fine. That's more room for me and for my Jilly Juice crowd. So, you know, it is what it is. So I get what's going on. <laughs> I totally get what's going on. But it took going through the series of evolution being exposed to this virus. And since I can convert the data from the virus efficiently, I will derive benefit from all the viruses, from all of my environment. Those of you that are afraid of the virus because you can't convert energy correctly. Those of you that need prayers from everybody else and you can't even pray for yourself, you have the inability to convert energy correctly. Those of you that need People, most of the time, like I need my husband because we're working in a partnership and he is a great companion for me. We bounce off each other. Um, I don't need a best friend. I mean, he's my relatively my best friend, I guess, on some level. But I really have like no one that I am like following. I follow myself. I've created my own my own, you know, world. Some of you are going to have the ability with your blank slate with the J juice is to create your own world. I'm not creating anyone's world. I'm giving you the option to erase all the past crap, give you a blank slate, and then you write in exactly. That's why writing is so important because that's what you are actually invoking into your future. So when you start writing and you start speaking, like recording yourself and you're writing, you are actually designing your future. You're going to be the architect of your future, but you keep on reading other people's stuff and you're taking on other people's ideas and you're reacting to the activism and you're part of, part of the politics, religion, and science. You have been under a spell and will continue to be under a spell. But remember, we still have to follow the laws of our society which is the laws of life because they don't condone killing. They don't condone doing things that are dangerous that involve somebody else that could be, you know, that, that could die. And so that is all life promoting. That's man-made law and, and natural law are not that far apart. And then we have to make room for those people that want the freedom to destroy themselves, but not right away. So we have to give that latitude. So things then become gray areas in society of which then you have to understand those gray areas and the black and white you know, areas that you really need to pay attention to if you want to design your life in congruency with your society. And so that's what Jilly Juice does. It gives you the blank slate. So you're not subject to the spells of your predecessors. And when someone tries to cast a spell on you, 
you can deflect that so quickly. And believe me, I have. People have tried to cast spells on me all the time. And I shoot right back. And then I apologize for coming off very aggressive. But they get where I'm coming from. Because not everybody expects someone to come off aggressive when they're trying to say something. Even though it's in, in jest, they don't realize that they crossed a boundary because they're just doing what they do. They're trying to direct everybody around them to do what they believe in. And then if you say, okay, that is not what I believe in. You cannot direct my life in this way and da 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 and then you realize they're like, what the hell? And then you come back and apologize. You still got the words out, but you're still owning the fact that they probably don't know any better than doing what they usually do until someone tells them that's inappropriate. And then everything is fine. And that's the thing. Is, so don't ever say never apologize for being who you are. Because sometimes, you know, when you want to, you don't know how people are going to take your reaction. You want to understand that that sometimes... Um, you rather just say, you know, I'll say safe face, but you want to just make things okay because you want to have a continued relationship with people. Some people I don't really care about. And so I'll say what I got to say because I have no interest in building a relationship with them because they're a stranger. I have no idea their intentions, but the people that I know, I'm, you know, I give them a lot more latitude, but they have to know who I am as well. Okay. And that is the discernment you will figure out how to program people around you about who you are so they don't keep casting spells on you. Okay? And then you will bring, bring logic, you will bring, you know, balance, you will bring intellect to any conversation or any, you know, any group, even if you don't talk about anything at all except for stuff that really doesn't mean much. You'll just be like, hey, whatever. <laughs> you'll just, you'll just blend in not upset the apple cart. And so, um, so just understand that. And so this will be part of my, my esoteric knowledge, part of my book, because this is like probably the most important thing to understand is that words cast spells. And then humans must have the ability to convert all forms of energy, not just food energy and water energy and element energy, but element energy, but also word energy. And people get careless with their words, not realizing how many spells they cast out there and then how much harm they're inflicting on people out there. And so, and then also how much harm they inflict upon themselves, how many words they carry in their body, causing obesity as well as causing malnutrition where there are, well, obesity is malnutrition, but it's carrying excess energy and weight and not able to release. But when somebody is underweight, it's because they have deflected almost all the energy in the world and they are starving. And so now you understand what cancer disease and chronic illness is. It's the inability to convert energy properly based upon words and food and elements and everything out there. All right.